Okay, hey, hey, Jelly Toast here, back with more Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. We're on the second game now, which I think is called Resolve. But since Twitch only has it as Great Ace Attorney Chronicles and not as the first game and the second game, I'm just considering this first case in the second game as Ace 6. So there should be 10 cases in total. Um, I also changed my mic setting. So hopefully it works better and there'll be less echoes and you won't hear as much rustling. Although. I might need to get like um, a desk clamp for my mic because it seems to hear anything when I move on my desk. So that's a little annoying. But we'll see how this goes today. So let's continue. Oh yeah, I'm looking this way. I'm so sorry, Susato. Should have told you about the toxin. Hey. You have a strong sense of responsibility, I know. That's why you decided to shoulder the burden alone. No, that's not it at all. I... I was just... I was scared of my failure coming to light, that's all. So I hoped to retrieve the substance from the English woman before anyone found out. How long is this game? Um, I don't know, but I'm only on the first case of the second game, so there's gonna be four more after this, and if it follows what Great Ace Attorney 1 did, then this- <clears throat> excuse me, this one should be really short. Second one should also be only about two sessions, and then third one should be like three sessions, fourth one should be four, and then last one should be like a lot. But hey Regal, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Yeah, one day, like, when- during Christmas break or something, I just want to, like, marathon. Yeah, because I don't think I'm going anywhere for Christmas, hopefully, fingers crossed. But if I just stay home every day, then maybe I'll just belt out, like, um... All of Danganronpa, or, like, as most of Danganronpa that I can, and Dragon Quest. Ugh. Uh, GG's 30 more streams. Uh No, it's- I think it's only been like 15, but I remember I cut one of them really short, so hopefully it won't be as long. But we'll see. Before the trial started, do you remember what you said, Susato? That you had no doubt in your mind about my innocence? That you'd stand by me to the last? I remember. And yet I... I didn't deserve your trust in me. I hid important details from you, Susato. I completely betrayed your faith in me. Hit me, Susato. I deserve it. No, in fact, throw me to the floor. No, oh, that's too good for me as well. Drag me through the steady streets. This girl um, is interesting. No better, you know. Oh. She is kinky. <laughs> Even though in my heart I knew that you'd pulled a knife blade from Miss Brett's back. There was just a brief moment when, in my mind, I doubted you. My game audio is messed up? Is it really? Frack. Let me replug the HDMI in. How's that? Do 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 boop boop Susato! Sorry, after I stood here and promised you that I'd stand by you and always be on your side. I betrayed your faith in me too. Much better? Nice. Thank you. I do a check before I start streaming, but like the bass is so low that I don't really hear any weird stuff. So thank you for letting me know about audio issues. And as such, I failed you as a lawyer. Oh no, no! I think this situation has taught both of you a valuable lesson. Placing your unbridled faith in another is no easy task. Yes, father. That fact has certainly struck home. Which is why I can see more clearly now. So, they... Yes? 
Can you find it in your heart to forgive me? Oh, Suzato. You know you'll always be a gallant, dashing lawyer in my eyes now. Oh, day. Bum, bum, ba, dum. I was so scared, you know, when it happened. I didn't know what was going on. The English woman was sitting at the back of the hut, listening to what I was saying. I know it was you who stole the poison! Well now, whatever do you mean? And then a moment later, she suddenly got to her feet. Before collapsing on the floor in front of me, a knife in her back. It all happened right before my eyes. And... You were the only people in the hut at the time? That's right. There's Miss Brett and myself. There was no one else. I just don't understand how she could possibly have been stabbed like that. Hmm. A great mystery indeed. I still can't believe it happened. That's why I just couldn't bring myself to speak it up. Speak up. It'll be alright. However it happened, and whatever really went on by the sea that day, I promise you that I'm going to prove everything you've said you saw is true. Spoken like a true Mikotoba. Now, I think we should discuss what's coming up in the trial, don't you? We don't have much time. We must make sure we have our facts in order. Yes, I expect the poison is going to come under close scrutiny in the upcoming proceedings. The police should hopefully have identified it on the blade by now. The trouble is, it's a completely new laboratory synthesized blend of alkaloids. The police won't have any way of testing for it. Oh, I see. Yes, without this chemical reagent, it's impossible to detect a toxin. Chemical reagent? I sent a colleague of mine off with some earlier to deliver to police headquarters. I think perhaps you should have some as well, though, just in case. Ba -da -ba -da. Uh, indicator solution for a new poison under development by my father's team. We're going to definitely use it later. <laughs> oh, actually, should I observe? I should examine it now. Oh, just in case there's stuff on the bottle. The label appears to be written in a foreign language that I don't know. It's German, so your knowledge of English is going to be of little help here, I'm afraid. That is not German! What does it say? Couldn't you have written medicine on it in Japanese? Then we'd all be able to read it. German is the international language of medicine, my dear. But yes, I can certainly see the merit in labeling the bottle in Japanese. Though I'm not sure medicine would be entirely appropriate. That was a useless conversation! Okay, so it's been slightly used, and I don't think I could open it now. But yeah, that is not German. That is just gibberish. No, 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 no! Okay, I want to go back. Uh, What's the matter, Susato? You're suddenly very quiet. It's this newspaper article. Exclusive, deadly poison stolen from Yume Medical Research Laboratory. I'm wondering how the information got out, given that it was a government secret. It was all the Englishwoman's doing! What? It was when the professor and Sosaki-san were being interviewed at the laboratory. That so-called English lady swanned in and without any compunction said to Professor Mikotoba. Hey, Professor, surely you guys would love to hear about your work on the shifters, dear. It put me in a very awkward position, to be frank. But Sosaki-san's curiosity had been piqued, so I had little choice but to give him a cursory introduction. So then, Sosaki-san knew about the poison. Yes, and it highly, it's highly likely that the reporter who was writing up the story about us would have caught a glimpse of the toxin too. This many more memo-san. By the way, did that reporter join you all when you went to the beach? Oh, no, I don't remember the reporter being there. Indeed, he shouldn't have been. 
I very much doubt anyone would have wanted him there. Oh? A known criminal had been given permission by the authorities to bathe by the seaside. Soseki-san pointed out that inviting a reporter might be problematic, so the man was sent back to his office. Yet he obviously didn't go back. He secretly followed the party to the beach and took this very candid photograph. And then presumably he posted it anonymously to the police. Huh. I, they're just like reviewing facts again, like I know all this, man. Yes, that must be what happened. Council! We've just heard that the new witness is now ready to testify. Trial is about to resume. Please proceed to the courtroom at once. It's time to steal ourselves once again, then. Defense attorney Ryu Taro Naruhodo. Yes! They has put her faith in me now and told me everything. I can't let her down. I have to prove that what she's telling the court is true. I have to prove what really happened that day. And I will. Yes, 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 yes. I hear by Carlos Court, I don't remember his voice, to order as we can reconvene to tr continue the trial of Rei Memami. Prosecutor Auchi, have you summoned the new witness? Before I address that question, Your Excellency, I have some very important news to share. Oh? What news? Why does he look so happy about it? During the recess with the collaboration of Professor Mikotoba's laboratory at Yume University, the police re examined the knife that was used to end Miss Giselle Brett's life. Excellent. I admire your rapid handling of the matter. Oh, too kind, Your Excellency, too kind. I was merely carrying out your instructions, of course. I had the reagent delivered to the police headquarters by Rickshaw, so it would be there in good time. But judging by the man's swagger, I fear we might need to brace ourselves for the inevitable. And counsel? What were the results? This dagger, which was so cruelly used to end the life of the victim, has no trace of poison anywhere along its blade! What? Are you sure about that? I would stake the reputation of the police on it. Armed with the reagent, the test is extremely simple. It couldn't have made a mistake. Unless... it's a different knife? In short, the accused feeble excuse earlier, shut up while I examine the knife. <laughs> Ah yes, this must be the victim's blood. Oh dear, blood is never a pretty sight, is it? Having to fight the urge to run it under a hot tap and get it clean. You've always been fastidious about cleanliness, haven't you? I think this is something else, father. Uh, we can't do fingerprints yet. Not like we would know about fingerprint technology. Hmm. <laughs> Well, they gave me this for a reason, so I feel like I'm going to use it, so... Has been utterly destroyed. Ah. Now, the prosecution is ready to call the new witness. Ah, the newspaper reporter who managed to capture a photograph at the crucial moment. Good. Very well, officer. Bring in the witness. No trace of poison on the knife. But what if that's really the case? How could the toxin have entered the victim's body? Hmm. Somewhere in her drink? Wasn't she drinking something or not? Witness, please state your name and occupation for the court. Hey, what's that on his hands? I ten many memo of the Shoyu News. I'm what people like to call a journo. What's a journo, father? Do you know? 
It's simply a contraction of journalist. I'm there when news breaks, putting pen to paper to catch those scoops that are in the print next morning. They don't- oh my gosh, oh, don't snap your suspenders like that. They don't call me the hero of the Herald for nothing, the nice guy of news. Oh, so, um, it was you who took this photograph, was it? Well, well, what have we here? I'm... I'm sorry? Ooh, race yourselves, people! Many of most senses of scoop boops, I went quickly. Female student up to foul play, defended by curiously has a lawyer in Supreme Court. The readers will lap this up. We'll set it above the fold at the 70 point in the five like format for the morning edition. Huh? Right then. Let's start with your name. Oh, um, it's Ryu Taro Naruhodo. Next, what made you become a, want to become a lawyer? Hey, his armband symbol! It's the same as the pen! Dun dun da da! Um, well, um, I wanted to reform our country's legal system, I suppose. Yutaro has suddenly become very ambitious, I see. Just borrowed Kazuma-sama's dream for a while. By the way, my name is Taketsuchi Aochi. That's Taketsuchi Aochi. The so-called dark horse of the Supreme Court. My objections strike fear into every, de into every defense lawyer's heart. No, the readers won't buy that. Wah! Okay, so he's using a pencil, but like I feel like he's licking it because he's used to a pen. So clearly we see that the pen belongs to him. Along with the symbol on his armband. Um, yes. What this court demands to know is whether or not you were responsible for the taking of this picture. It was delivered anonymously to the Imperial Police Bureau only yesterday. Yeah, I wouldn't be a journo if I didn't click quick when presented with a scoop like that now, would I? Their voices are too similar. Maybe I should make his more higher pitched. Sometimes story call out to me, sometimes I have to chase them down, but either way, you've gotta be fast. Fast legs to run with and fast hand to write with. It's no good if you don't note it down, I always say. That's what I call my mini memosum. Any memosum? Ah, oh, yes, I remember your face. You met that day when you were interviewing myself and Soseki san. Yes, right, that was me, Mini Mamo again. But you were supposed to be going back to show you news offices after our meeting. But the scoop is, I didn't! Because that Englishwoman's words had piqued my journalistic interest. Miss Brett's words? A criminal left to do as she pleases just because she happens to be a British citizen? Give him a 90s Chicago gangster accent. It's horse dung! This country's judiciary system- wait, judiciary is rotten to the core! The Supreme Court's rulings aren't worth the paper they're written on. The people, the police are just imperial pawns, say. Eh? Stay your tongue, young man. There are complex political issues at play. Hmm. Well, anyway, I quickly jolted down those words she said in my minimalism memo pad. Are you ready? I'll read it out. It's all here. Right, here goes. I should like to go with everyone to see your country's coast. A serious criminal going on some junket. The people need to know about this. Order of 0. 0.002 is roughly one third the amount of halves. <laughs> what is up with you and your crazy math equations, Golden? Also, hey, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. Uh, that's why I decided to sneak after them. How go things? Things are good. Um, oh yeah, I didn't stream last Thursday. I got my COVID booster shot on Thursday. Um, <clears throat> and I was just so exhausted until like yesterday and i had like pain in my underarm to my armpit but really hurt to move my arm too it was like the worst shot out of the three covid shots i got but i hope you all had a good weekend i hope all of you are well you get the woman's story so i can have her in the press do you mean to say you did indeed witness it firsthand. 
Grim's scene portrayed in this photograph. Oh yes, I saw it with my very own journal eyes. From the start to finish, do the viewfinder of my trusted camera. Thank you, Mini Memo san. You will now give a formal testimony before the court. You will state exactly what it is that you witnessed on the events of the events surrounding this bread stuff. Camera never lies. The beach hut was made of shoddy old reed screen, so there were plenty of gaps I could see inside through. The Englishman was sitting on a stool when the student girl came in and started arguing with her. Seconds later, the girl pulled out a knife, drawing the Englishwoman to the floor as she stabbed her in the back. My smoldering journal spirit burst into flames. Quick as a flash, I whipped out my camera, ready to click. I pulled apart the rough weave of one of the screens and poked the lens through for the perfect shot. Hmm... Read screens, you say? Right! You can see them clearly enough in that great shot I snapped. The hut where walls are just screens made of coarsely woven reeds. Say... Yes, it allows the breeze to pass through and bring some relief from the summer heat. And it was a breeze for me to put my camera through and see the whole thing hotting up. Ignoring for the time being the appalling invasion of privacy involved. Did you witness everything that happened from the moment the defendant entered the hut? Oh yes, I saw it. I saw the whole thing from start to finish. And you say that you took the photograph through a gap in one of the screens? Luckily for me, they were pretty shuttily woven. I pulled the reeds apart and thrust the lens of my camera through the gap. Would I get away with it, or would I be seen? It was a gamble of a lifetime. A tenacity of purpose that's considered admirable in a journalist, I suppose. Run risk one day, run a scoop in the next. That's many memoism in a nutshell. At last. It would appear we have a genuine witness to this wicked crime. <laughs> yeah, genuine witness because he did it. He killed her. The evidence and testimony are extremely compelling. I believe we may be close to a verdict. No! Wonderful news, Your Excellency. Wonderful! Nevertheless, it cannot be denied. But this testimony begs one very large question. What question? Exclusive news. A startling photograph. All the makings of an exceptional story for the reporter. Why, then, was the story never published? Oh, that's right. It seems clear to me that there are circumstances at play here that are yet to be understood. Huh. More pathetic excuses. Very well then, Council. Proceed with your cross-examination. Yes, Your Excellency. There's more to this reporter than meets the eye. Transformers, robots, and disguise. He's keeping something about this case very close to his chest. I mean, he looks kind of weird too. Like, he's definitely hiding something. Beach hut was made of. Nevertheless, press everything. What made you want to see what was happening inside the beach hut in the first place? Call it journal instinct. Can you think of a better reason? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps because as well as being a proven criminal, the person inside was a young woman? Ah, oh, I see where you're going with this. Brace yourselves, people. He's painted a per he's painting the journal as a voyeur. Oh, I forgot. I'm a he right now. It's hardly slander, sir. You had a camera and you were taking pictures without the woman's knowledge. Nope, you've got it all wrong, little student boy. Sorry? To my mind, all that was inside the hut was a scoop. Nothing more, nothing less. Scoops no no gender. Man or woman, it's all news. That's not even many memoism. It's basic journalism. He's probably not a reporter. He's probably an actual gangster. Look at his hair. Just look at the way he slurps his soup. Slurps his soup? But yeah, um, maybe he really isn't a reporter. But then how does he have that camera? Hmm. Only the courtroom was as indiscriminate. 
Right, so if that's all buttoned up, can we move on? Tell the court then, witness, what sight befell your eyes when you looked inside the hut. A sight that vindicated my journals and think that's what? When I pulled back the reeds, I could see it all as clear as day. Um, that was a Game Grumps reference. Slurps a soup? When? When did they say- when did they talk about slurping soup? What? I remember mac and cheese, um... um oh no, when was it? Ocarina of Time? Yo, that was so long ago! Is- The only thing I can remember about their Ocarina of Time playthrough was, um... When they first named, um... When Zelda first said slurp. Slurp. And... Um... And the clams. You're telling me you don't watch compilations and animations? I do. Oh, that was the same moment? Why do I not remember the slurping soup comment? Oh my gosh. I do watch the compilations and animations. I, o I only really watch the um, official Game Grumps compilations, the one that they have on their... Um, on their channel, not like fan compilations. Oh man, maybe I should go back and rewatch it. Whoopsies. The English woman was sitting on a stool. Blah, blah, blah. You actually saw Menbami-san entering the hut. Yep, and she was raging. Raging like my journal spirit. And the argument you mentioned, what was it that about exactly? You stole it. I didn't steal it, that kind of thing. Talking about the poison, I suppose. The student girl walked right up to the Englishwoman and really started laying into her. I mean, if she'd laid into her anymore, there would have been eggs. The man should have been an author. His descriptive talents are wasted on journalism. But the student's rantings fell on deaf ears. Like a Japanese person listening to English for the first time. Really ought to work on his similes first, though, to be honest. Anyway, the point is, that woman in the dock was mightily angry. And her temper finally got the better of her, it seems. Dear me. Which was the climactic moment I caught on film. Seconds later, the girl put out a knife. Going in. But didn't you say you... Mm -mm? Do you swear before this court that you actually saw the precise moment when the stabbing took place? Huh. The precise moment? I didn't see just that. I saw the whole hellish scene play out. From start to finish. I have here a simple plan of the beach hut. Perhaps you could use it to explain to the court exactly what you witnessed. Right you are. It's all in my mini memo memo pad. When I first peered into the hut, I'm sure that the Englishman on this stool at the back of the hut here. Every time he says hut, I think of Pizza Hut. <laughs> yes, the accused's own testimony confirmed that. Just sat at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly, is what I have noted down. It's my turn to testify now. Try not to interrupt. Ugh. Then, the next moment, as I was watching... The evil student girl entered the hut. After a while, the pair of them ended up in the middle of the hut, arguing furiously. The Englishman went in for the student, but the girl dodged out of the way. This is clearly wrong. And in a flash, plunged the knife into her adversary's back as the two passed each other. Hmm, what you describe as a grim crime indeed. This is clearly false! Never sugarcoat the truth. That's what many memoism says. The beach hut plan has been entered into the courts. By the way, many memosan, whilst you were watching that terrible scene unfold before your eyes through, uh, through the gap in the screen, did it not occur to you to try to prevent the tragedy rather than capture it on film? Journals have to be observers. We can't get involved. That's our raison d'etre. I don't. You can't speak French. Raison d'etre. I don't know. You didn't converse with Miss Brett at all? 
Obviously not. An observer always remains on the outside looking in. And that's something to be proud of, is it? Your Excellency, if I may. Yes, Professor. I think the witness's last expertly phrased statement should perhaps be added to his formal testimony. Father, what are you... I will grant the defense's request. Mini-Memo-san, you will supplement your formal testimony with the aforementioned statement. Well, nihilism is the foundation of many memoism but I'll gladly prove that my words aren't meaningless. He's going to, like... When he freaks out, he's gonna snap his suspenders like they're gonna rip. Uh, I was only there as an observer. Hold the part to read on the screen. Um... Wait, how could we just jump to his last thing? I never once set foot in Hut Northbrook with the English woman. I was only there as an observer. Um... Well, first of all... I mean, in my head, I'm thinking... Um, whatchamacallit. This is clearly wrong because the diagram he gave us... Um... The diagram he gave us has victim closer to the door, facing the culprits, right? Because... Right? But then if you look at the photo, like here, like she, she's facing the door. So, hmm. Hey Smooth, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. To be safe, to be safe, let me just press every single uh, statement. Um, yeah, because the last one I... The court is fully aware that you desire to capture the incident on film, I'm sure. But why then did you choose to post the photograph anonymously to the police? I'm afraid I don't understand a word that's coming out of your mouth. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? I'm asking why, as a journalist, you decided not to make a story out of the incident. Because you killed her. Think of me as a sculptor. A sculptor who makes art out of the sordid private details of other people's lives. But I never discuss my own personal life on principle. I mean, that's basic many memoism It's not something to boast about. No doubt your burning desire to see the truth exposed and justice done was what motivated you. That's it! That's brilliant! My burning desire to see something or other exposed. There has to be a good reason why he didn't think to write an article about what he saw, though. Because he killed her. By your own admission, you were outside the hut. How then did you manage to take the photograph? Ah, uh, yes, that. I'm glad you asked. All the part to roughly, blah, blah, blah. But the two women inside didn't notice? Ha! Ah, obviously not. Was this guy who took that photo? Yeah, this is the guy who took the photo. They had, where would I be right now? In jail, that's where. Which you think would make you reflect on what you were doing. No, not a journalist's job to collect little snippets of life as unobtrusively as possible. Did I read that right? I don't know. What happened? Because I think I missed last stream. Last stream, um, uh, my defendant, my friend, um, let's see. Oh, now we can choose people. My friend was accused of killing her from the first game, and she was due to go back to go to Shanghai the next day, but then she's killed, so they're like, ah, oh, it's an easy case because there are only two people in the hut. But I know that this guy killed her. Uh, leaving nothing but footprints, take nothing but photos. Yes, that's spot on. We never found out what was her, her deal was. Yeah, it just ended. She's just dead, so I'm like... Why bring her back for now if we're... I don't know why she's important. Did he just make that up? Yes, he did. The point is, the witness risked life and limb to obtain this photograph. And this photograph reveals the whole truth. 
There's nothing more to be said. Can I like examine his ink stain on his hand and be like, yo, where's your pen? Really? You didn't set foot inside the hut at all? Are you quite sure about that? I think you have made the wrong impression of me. We're talking about a murder scene here. My nerves were stretched to breaking point already. Oh, I see. You were scared. Maybe I did have the wrong impression of you. Yes. It was all I could do to stifle a scream and hold my hand steady enough to snap the shot. You really should have summoned hope before thinking of your camera. Many memoism and humanism don't always agree. And most of the time in those instances, many memoism comes out on top. <sighs> As a sculptor of stories, sometimes I have to be cruel for my art. Yes, that's spot on. Apparently he's making all this up. He claims to have spied the whole affair from start to finish. If true, his testimony is devastating. But it does seem as though he's holding something back, doesn't it? What if? What if the poison is actually on the pen that Giselle was holding in her hand? Because what if she was like, ah, and she pulled it out and then he stabbed her with a knife to be like, haha, there's no poison on the knife, so it's going to look like this girl killed her. But really, the poison was on the tip of the pen. She pulled it out. And uh, that's probably what happened. If that's how you feel, I suggest you trust your instincts and press him on everything he said. I pressed him on everything. As you've no doubt seen many times in, uh, before in your role as judicial assistant. Yes, I have. I've seen witnesses like this pressed often. I know exactly what to do. I already pressed everything. So now I... Um... Man, I really want to present the photograph and be like, you're wrong! But I kind of also want to present the pen here. But... <sighs> what happened to Dunosuke? He's still in London. This is Japan. Okay, I'm gonna present this. The music stopped! Many Memo-san, until now I've had a firm belief. That newspapers are in the business of uncovering and publishing the truth. You're spot on there. The press doesn't lie, which is why I'm proud to wear the emblem of the Shoyu News on my arm. In a way, that's more mini memoism. Sadly, though, it seems the journalists who write for those papers don't always share the same passion for the truth. What? What are you suggesting with those recrimin? Rec Recriminatory? Recriminatory words? I've never seen that word before. Mini Memo-san, do you recognize this fountain pen? Ah! This pen was found at the scene of Mitz Breast's death. In fact, the murdered victim was gripping it in her hand as she died. What are you? If you look at the barrel of the pen, you'll notice that its owner's initials are engraved there. R. M. Yes, thank you for bringing that up, Council. The initials of the accused, they remember me. Is it a coincidence, I wonder? That your initials are also RM. No! Dai ten many memo. RM. That. That's. First down! Can't you see? One of the central tenets of many Memoism is being a pencil user! And yet, as the court will clearly be able to see, on your right hand, there's a very obvious blue ink stain. That's blue, it looks purple. It would appear that you must have had rather carelessly left it somewhere recently. Your favorite fountain pen, that is. Horsey! Horsey helps horse dung! <laughs> Many Memo-san, isn't that the case that before she died, you met with Gis Giselle Brett in that beach hut? Why should we listen to this absurd nonsense? It's nothing but another excuse! Exactly! 
sure you news will stand behind me all the way. I deny everything. There must be as many people with the initials RM as there are stars in the night sky. The defense has neither time nor the inclination to count every star in the sky. Hmm? There's no need anyway, because this pen has more to tell. Yes, there's another clue. A clue that undeniably proves who the owner really is. Who its owner really is. In that case, counsel, the defense will now show the court where this alleged clue lies. Of course, your excellency. Okay, so I thought the symbol was supposed to be like part of an evil group, but it turns out the symbol is a newspaper! As well as the initials, there's also an emblem on this fountain pen. An emblem that you will of course recognize, many memos on. Um Goodness me, it's it's the emblem of the Shoyu News. In other words, the owner of this pen is an employee of the Shoyu News whose initials are RM. Suddenly the stars in the night sky don't seem so numerous, do they? Oh, she burned you! Well, Mini memo -san, how do you respond? <laughs> no! No, now he's gonna be like, Oh, wait, there's another reason why, blah, 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 blah. It's like, he's gonna be like, Yes, I was in the hut, but I was in there before the ladies got in. Order, order, explain yourself, witness. So, this is how the mighty Supreme Court works, is it? Using coercive tactics to have well-meaning citizens reveal harmless secrets. Yes, I was in the hut, but I was in the pizza hut. <laughs> I've used nothing but honest tactics. Alright then, fine. I won't try to hide it anymore. Yes, not long before that grim rat tragedy unfolded. I, a show you news reporter on behalf of the public, conducted an interview with the Englishwoman. An interview? You, you never mentioned this before. What exactly was this? As I said, it was before that evil little student girl showed her face in the hut. Mmm, pizza. I had Domino's pizza on Friday. It was okay. I mean, it was good, but not like fully satisfying. I kind of want pizza again. It couldn't have lasted more than two or three minutes. That's all. It was a brief exchange. But it came to nothing. And we many, and as we many memos say, the people don't pay their duties, their dues for unworthy news. I can read. Domino's is the worst garbage I've ever had. It's the closest pizza place, and I wanted pizza fast. However insignificant you deem it to be, this court cannot overlook the meeting between yourself and the victim. You will testify now under oath about the precise nature of this meeting and what transpired. Got it. Yes, all right, but... On one condition. C condition In all good conscience, I couldn't speak out alone about this. You need to call back the earlier witness, Soseki Natsume-san. Soseki-san? Oh yes, according to my notes here, that man has a secret of his own, and brace yourselves. Because it's not a harmless one, it's big! Wow, now he's trying to pin this on Soseki-san. You are garbage, sir. Many memos and states that one man's secret is every other man's front page story. Very well, I will grant the witness's request in this instance. Officer, summon the early witness back to the stand. Soseki-san. Hiding something? Witness testimony. The witness's secrets. I asked the English woman for an interview, but she declined, so I left the hut without making a fuss. Then, watching secretly from the outside, I saw the woman being stabbed and the other witnesses come running. The detective realized that the victim still had a pulse, so he ran off to fetch help. That's when this red man here asked the woman on a very significant question. But he didn't say anything about that in his testimony, which is why many memos and demands I reveal it now. Yeah. 
You you mean to say the victim? The victim regained consciousness? Oh, uh, well, um... And when she did, you, you decided to ask her a question? That's, um, true, yes. He did, he did. And that's not all. The woman gave him a very definite answer. An answer that incriminates the accused. This is preposterous. Why am I only hearing about this now? Why didn't you mention this before, you, you yokel hack? It, 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 it wasn't even a conversation. Yes, I did pose a withering English rose a question. I don't deny it. But she could no longer speak. She was barely conscious even. Counsel for the defense, I expect a thorough cross-examination to be conducted here. The court must and will know the truth. Absolutely, Your Excellency. The reporter is claiming that Miss Brett implicated Ray somehow. What on earth could have happened in that hut? A man stabbed her and she died. That's what happens. Again, press every step, man. You asked her for an interview, you say? Well, of course I did. I wanted to ask her about the incident she was involved in at the end of last year. About the case in which Dr. John H. Wilson lost his life. That's not the way I phrased it. Many memos and calls for straight talking. Why did you murder Dr. Wilson, is how I put it to her. Yes, that sort of talking is as straight as a ruler. Ask every question as if you're asking for a menu in a restaurant, I say. It's the best way. A veteran at paper taught me that. And how did Miss Brett answer? With one simple phrase. Mystery is a woman's charm. Phew, that told me. I waltzed right out of there. Really? Something about that doesn't quite seem to fit together. Leave every room as if you're waltzing into a dance hall. That's, I say, it's the best way. A veteran at the paper taught me that. Then watching, say, blah, blah, blah. What is come running? That was very persistent of you, considering that Miss Brett has just turned you away. Persistent wins the prize. Any memo in many memos will tell you that. Let them think you've left. Then just when they lower the guard, that's when you swoop in for a scoop. And the fruits of your labor are all too apparent in this telling photograph. Well, I'm sure the young yokel student would rather not be reminded of this damning evidence. Actually, it's thanks to that photograph that we managed to identify this witness. And now that you've found me, I'll tell you whatever you want to know. I've got nothing to hide. Except the fact that you murdered her. I'm sure. Please do go ahead, witness. The court is eager to hear what you have to say. Try to stop me! There's a story to tell here, and I'm going to tell it! <laughs> and Sosuke-san remained behind in a hut. That's right, yep! I brought the friend here. It was a blabbering wreck, shaking all over from his head to his toes, mustache twitching, eyes bulging. He's weak, all sweaty arm spaghetti. What do you expect? You, you don't know the t -t -t terrifying troubles that haunted me with whilst traveling abroad. Back behind baleful bars. They'll be coming for me, surely. That's all I could think. I felt as though I was gasping for air, drowning in a sea of cold sweat. Poor Sosaki-san. His experiences in London have scarred him deeply. As the world seemed to close in around me, I quietly recited a prayer to Amida Buddha. Eternal emptiness, empty eternity. The end is coming for me, surely. No sutras are to resound in my courtroom, please. And now we come to the crucial part. That's when it happened. Oh, 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 no, no, no. Go back, go back, go back. Yeah. Uh, no. I have to realize that. Oh yeah, whoops, it's this statement. What question? What exactly did he say? Well now, you should hear that from the horse's mouth, I think. 
Don't you, Mr. Rider Man? Uh. Out with it, you yoko hack! What did you say to her? What did you say to the dying Englishwoman? Well, in truth, I've been catching crabs at the water's edge and building castles in the sand, you see. Well, the seaside is a place to be at leisure, I suppose, even for a grown man. But then all of a sudden, from that little beach hut, the young girl's panic-stricken cries for help pierced the air. Hey. I ran up to the beach to see what was happening, to find the defender leaning over the collapsed victim. As soon as the inspector Hosonaga saw his breath on the ground, he sprinted off to get help. And then, just a moment later, I heard a faint moan. A moan from the dead Englishwoman. I nearly jumped out of my skin! But what did you ask her, Soseki-san? I asked her, who did this to you? Don't protract this any longer, how did the woman respond? She didn't! She said nothing in response! B but When in the stand, you will answer the question as uh, asked you asked of you unambiguously. Now, without evasion or reticence, I demand that you amend your testimony. I will! As to who did this to you, but you never replied. They you tried to find out who the culprit was. He who asks a question is a fool for a minute, he who does not remains a fool forever. And having been labeled a criminal twice during my time in Great Britain, I was quick to make up my mind. Better to be a fool for a minute than remain a fool in prison forever! However, you've indicated that the victim fails to respond, is that correct? No, why? No, why the Englishwoman said nothing. She was ignoring me because my of my stupid mustache because I'm Japanese. Oh dear, Sosakisan has really developed a dislike for the English at sea. Having read the report on his time in Great Britain, I can't say I'm surprised at his xenophobia. But the Englishwoman didn't ignore it at all, did she, Mr. Right Man? Hmm. Well, yes, all right. She did respond in a manner of speaking, I suppose. Just lifted a trembling finger and pointed in the direction of the defendant. Spread pointed a finger at the defendant? Tosaki san, is that really true? Not easy to stand here and say this, but. When we first encountered the beach hut. When we first entered the beach hut. The Englishwoman was sprawled on the floor before us, with the student standing on the far side of her. And when I asked, who did this to you? Okay, so this map is right, so good thing I didn't present it before. The Englishwoman summoned her last ounce of strength to point a trembling finger at the back of the huts. Which was, it can't be denied, in the direction of the student girl who stands accused today. Oh. So, Sekizan, why on earth did you neglect to mention this in your original testimony? B -b what? Fiddlesticks, I say! This is not a British court of law. You will respond to Japanese. Yes, of course. The Englishwoman did point a finger towards the back of the hut, but... But I was trembling, and she was trembling, and everything was a blur! I'm thinking about it, I feel as though perhaps she was pointing in a slightly different direction. Actually, no, not slightly, in a very different direction to where the student girl was standing! To somewhere at the back of the hut, where nobody was standing at all! Oh, it's the hole in the wall. Oh, what's up? Game of good voice work. Oh, thank you, Backsack. Also, how are you doing? Thanks for joining. This guy is Evan Sus. I think Soseki-san is telling the truth, but the, the photographer is shady. You mean that your memory of events and the direction in which the victim was pointing are both unclear? Yes, that's it. Unclear. I'm very, very unclear. Wait, was that in English? Did I? Do I have this game in English now? Whoopsies. 
Your Excellency, surely this proves the matter beyond all re reasonable doubt. Yes, the woman may barely have been conscious, and yes, perhaps her finger wavered slightly. But there can... I can't speak. But there can be no doubt that this was an attempt by the victim to confirm the identity of her assailant. Why? Because as the court can see, there was no other... There was no one other than the accused in the direction of the victim was pointing. There was. It is now abundantly clear that no one besides the accused could possibly have committed this crime. I'm gonna forgot to eat now, so I'm cooking dinner at 11.30 p.m. <gasps> That's so freaking late, dude. Oh my gosh. You should try to eat before at least, like, nine at the latest. Oh my gosh, but what are you making? I, I really want to eat mac and cheese. I'm inclined to agree. And in the absence of any credible argument to the contrary, I believe we can now conclude this trial. Nope, nope, nope. No! <laughs> Headlines running itself. Dashing lawyers hopes dashed. 92 across, 92 point across the whole page. Roll to an extra edition. This is a serious blow, Susato. Unless we're able to identify the true culprits and substantiate our claim with evidence. The judge will give his ruling, and the trial will be over. But that's impossible, father. We don't even know how the crime was committed yet. Impossible, though the task may seem, we have no choice. We must think back over everything we've learned thus far. Somewhere in all those details, I'm confident we'll find the clue we need. They gave us her account of how the events unfolded in the defendant's antechamber before the trial resumed. She told us what happened at the precise moment Miss Brett was killed. And all, all but SMTV was consuming me. I'm making pan-seared steak, rice, pilaf, salad, and girl. Dude, you're making a fancy dinner. When are you going to sleep? Also, oh, I totally forgot. SMT5 is out. Oh my, so many games to play. Thankfully, I didn't buy that yet. So maybe after I get through my backlog and when I finally get a PS5, I'll get that also. So I guess I have two games for PS5 so far. I have Tales of Arise and SMT5. Ugh, so many games, so little time. Then you should move shit in the back of the hut listening to what I was saying. And then a moment later, you suddenly got to her feet. Before collapsing on the floor in front of me, the knife ran back. How could Miss Brett have been stabbed in the back in a beach hut that was empty but for herself and they? Somewhere amid all the information we've gathered so far, there must be an answer to that question. I take it then that the defense has nothing further to add. So, the gallant Yonkel student's look finally runs out. I can't say I'm surprised. In that case, I am ready to deliver my final verdict on this matter. Excuse me, let me talk. I have something to say. This is a crucial turning point now. If I can't establish what really happened, it's over. Where was the real culprit hiding? And how did he or she stab the victim? I know how, but do I have evidence? I don't know, I'm gonna guess. Your Excellency, I respectfully ask you to propose your postpone your adjudication for the time being. Oh, to what end, counsel? The defense would like to present the court with an alternative theory. An alternative theory that can explain who the victim was actually trying to implicate with her d dying gesture. An alternative theory? Huh! None exists. Oh! There was someone else present at the scene who could have committed this crime. What? And the victim, Miss Brett, tried to reveal who it was to those around her at the time. By mustering all her remaining strength and pointing a trembling finger in the killer's direction. This, this is fiction! Fantasy! Very well, as you seem so sure of yourself, Counsel, I am prepared to hear your alternative theory. So, young Jutaro Nadoro. Yes, Your Excellency? You'll present your latest theory to the court by means of this plan. At the moment the victim was stabbed, where exactly are you proposing the culprit was concealed? Behind the chair. Right? Ah, 
Naruhoto-san would never give up. And I'm a Naruhoto now. The true culprit who fatally stabbed Miss Brett was concealed in this location here. I hope I was right. Are you mad, Council? You're suggesting the culprit was outside the hut. The Pizza Hut. What? Give me pizza! Whenever I get pizza, I love to get um, white sauce, it, like garlic parmesan sauce, and pepperoni, black olives, and spinach. That's my favorite pizza. Order, order, order! What student lawyer, not a Hodosan Esquire? That makes no sense at all! You've, you've just pointed out the exact spot where I was hiding to get my scoop snack! But I didn't see any suspicious individuals loitering about, I can swear to that. Because you're the suspicious individual! Obviously, if the culprit had been outside the hut. There's no way that he or she could have stabbed the victim who was inside the hut. Actually, Prosecutor Ouchie, there is a way. Ah! And, in point of fact, the defense can provide evidence strongly suggesting that this, that is precisely the way Miss Brett was killed. You're bluffing! You're, you're bluffing, you yoko! The defense's assertion is clearly too fantastical for the court to comprehend. So hard about it. We'll need to give us more guidance, counsel. If a freaking camera lens can fit through the, through, the, through the reeds to get a clear shot, why can't a... What piece of evidence corroborates your theory that the victim was stabbed from outside the hut? At this picture? But I want to be safe. Uh, so I'm going to look at the walkthrough. I'm guessing it's this, because it's like a camera lens fit through it! Um, let's see, outside the hut, present the crime scene photograph. First crime scene pro photograph. Oh, because there's a hole in the wall, okay. Whoops. There was a crime scene photograph. The original photographic print of the crime scene. Yes, it's clearly visible in this print. A trace of the fatal thrust that was delivered from the out from outside the beach hut. Hey, do you take us for fools? There's no hint of any such thing. I'm not sure that everyone present would agree. Someone, at least, appears to have noticed what is what it is that I'm referring to. Counsel, once again, I must call on you to be explicit for the court. Where in this photographic print is the trace of stabbing, which you claim, which your claim took place from the outside the hut? This, this dash. I'll get it right in the middle. I can't get it right in the middle, so whatever. Present. Look closely, just here. In the screen at the back of the hut, you can see the effects of a blade having been forced through the reeds. Wait. No, I can't! I can't see any such thing! Then you're blind! It's true that the hut in question had four walls that you would expect. However... By parting the reeds, a knife blade could easily penetrate them. This is extraordinary! Yes. The true culprit actually stabbed the victim from outside the beach hut. Uh-oh! And of everyone present at the scene, there's only one person who could have done that. Only one person who was directly outside the hut when Miss Brett was killed. Ride 10 many memo -san. it could have only been you. Hmm. No! Shut your trap. This preposterous idea leaves me almost speechless. Just look at the photograph again. The victim lies almost exactly in the center of Beach Hut, does she not? Are we to assume as part of this far farcical scenario, the assailant was a knife thrower? No, of course not. We're not? If you recall the testimony of the defendant about the events just before the victim's death. Inside the Beach Hut, I can find Miss Brett. She just sat on the stool at the back of the hut, smiling sweetly at me as if she knew she was invisible. More like fartsicle. Ha 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 ha. A stool? Have another look at the photograph. 
Look at this photograph. Every time it makes me laugh. Let's let in the read screen. Would align perfectly with the back of a person who was sitting on that stool. My word. So, in fact, the victim was... Killed, twi killed whilst sitting on that stool by a stab wound to her back delivered through the reed screen. Ah! Having been attacked, Miss Brett rose to her feet instinctively. But then, unable to speak, she collapsed on the floor in the middle of the hut. Before the defendant, Membami-san's appalled eyes. And that, Your Excellency, is the truth of what happened on the beach that day. And you poisoned her with your pen. By your silence, Manny Memosan. I take it that you don't deny the charge. This... this is... Absurd! That will do. It would appear that we have a tacit admission of guilt from the witness. Accordingly, this court has successfully established the truth of this matter. No, he's gonna be like, no, wait, guys, but li listen to this. Hear me out. It, I stabbed her, but I didn't kill her. That student killed her. Which means that the defendant, Membabisan, is an innocent of the crime. Oh, thank goodness. Finally made him cave. I must say, I've never been more proud. No. This can't be! The Alchi clan can't! What my growth! My growth of hope! It, it wasn't all an apparition! I can't accept this! I won't! See no reason for the continuance of the trial. I will therefore move to conclude proceedings by delivering my file. Mm. Yep, there we go! Well, this is all very convenient. This is how the highest court in our mighty empire delivers justice, is it? Suppressing well-meaning citizens' freedoms to speak and branding them as criminals. What? We've established that the victim was stabbed from outside the hut, through the reed screen walls. And no one but you was in the place at the time to have his hand on the hilt of the blade. It's a perfectly logical deduction. So, your argument hinges on the location of whoever stabbed the Englishwoman, does it? Well, it seems a little irrelevant now. Relevant? Where she was stabbed, how she was stabbed. It doesn't matter. I mean, whether she was stabbed at all makes no difference if you think about it. After all... This trial's already shown the whole thing hinges on something else! What has it? What are you talking about? Brace yourself, little man. I'm talking about the fact that everything's changed. Is it the dirt you dug up? What? Enough obscurity. Explain yourself, witness. What's to explain? I'm talking about the poison, of course. The poison? Let's ask the professor for a comment on the situation, shall we? I understand that the deadly poison you were developing was stolen from your laboratory, correct? And it's been shown that this poison was administered to the victim, Miss Brett. Is that right? That is correct. The unusual constriction of the victim's pupils are a sure sign that this particular poison was used. I see, I see. So, presumably that means... ...that the victim already had the poison in her body before she was stabbed. Ah. Given that her pupils were clearly constricted, it seems highly likely, yes. If she had been dead already, the poison could not have circulated in her blood. <laughs> ah, how refreshing to hear the argument of a metropolitan mind. Precisely, it matters not a jot who stabbed whom, in whose back, and with whose blade. Because
because, quite simply, the English woman's life was taken not by the knife, but by the poison. But that can be explained by the poison being on the blade, as I already... This other one. They proved that there's no poison on the blade. Ha 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 ha. Forgotten already, have we, Yoko? During these very proceedings, the laboratory of the professor at your side assisted in proving... ...that the blade of the weapon used to attack the victim had no trace of poison on it whatsoever. Ah, oh, it's on the pen. It's on the pen! So let me get this down. The facts are skillfully established by the defense in this trial. Turn out to be a headline-making red herring. Is that about right? I am going to smash your face in. You're so annoying. Um, well, uh... Order, 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 But where does this leave us? How, in that case, did the poison enter the victim's body? Through the pen! There's an undeniably obvious answer to that. The lady must most likely imbibe it. Like, there's no other... I mean, she was drinking wine. But we do not have a wine bottle here. They did not bring us the wine bottle or the cup. It's gotta be the pen. I mean, that that's why we have this. <laughs> you mean she drank it? Have another look at the photograph here, as you can see. Oh, no, maybe it wasn't the pen then. Maybe, maybe when he went in for the interview and he was like, Hey, you want to talk to me? And he just bloop in the drink. That's also possible. A bottle of carbonated water and a glass had been knocked onto the sandy floor of the beach hut. The poison could have been slipped into either. Somebody made Miss Brett drink it. Well, what do you know? Look at those dashing eyes. Those look like a great front page shot. Hey, what a bewitching stare. After all, I'm the last person you should be looking at. It would make no sense at all that I poisoned a woman, would it? I mean, that's been established already. Established? What are you talking about? Hmm? Don't tell me you've forgotten. That's a little hard to believe, given that the person who established it... ...was you! Me? What on earth does he mean? Oh, the pen was empty. The pen has some ink left in it. Let me capture those wide eyes. This is prime press water, this is. It would seem that this trial is not destined to end yet after all. I hereby call upon the witness to give further testimony. That's great, that is. Let me get a shot of that magnificent beard, your excellency. Oh, he thinks he's so... He's so happy because he thinks he's off the hook. But I'm gonna get you, man. You claim it to be impossible that you were the one responsible for administering the poison to the victim. You will explain to the court in your testimony the basis upon which you make such a claim. I'm a journal and I'm a man. I've never tried to run or hide from anything in my life. And I'm not about to start now, because that's mini memoism. For a brief moment, I thought I'd illuminated the truth, but it slipped right back into obscurity again. Just where is this trial going to take us? It's going to take us to many memos death. I will personally kill him. <laughs> Complete innocence. Oh yes, I stabbed the English woman. And it's a very... And it's that very fact that proves I'm innocent. Because why would I bother to stab a woman if I've already poisoned her? To make it look like Ray killed her, ya dummy! When I heard the student girl and that pompous English woman murderer arguing, it got my goat. If the courts weren't going to punish Brett for what she did, someone else would have to see justice done. So, you admit it then? That everything happened as I described? That you are the one who stabbed Miss Brett in the back through the reed screen. You can blame this miserable country of ours. Huh? A country that bows to the pressure of foreign powers and lets murderers walk free. What kind of future can a country like that have? That's why I did it. I did what our pathetic leaders didn't have the guts to do. Slap bang in the middle of that charming lady's back. I plunged a blade of sweet justice right in there. So can't he be arrested for attempted murder? As someone who spends his life saying the truth is told. I feel really, really awful about giving false information in my testimony before. But as it turns out... 
There was somebody else who had it in for the victim and got to her before me. That's right. You guessed it. That pretty little student girl. Now there's a woman after my own heart. Implicating- you're implicating Ray again. She's the one who gave the poison to the Englishman and ended her pitiful existence. And suddenly, snap! This journal here is off the hook. Hmm, the argument is sound, certainly. If the witness had administered the poison himself, he would need only have waited for it to take effect. Subsequently, stabbing the victim in the back would have had would have been entirely nonsensical. And therefore, this reporter had nothing to do with the poisoning. Yes, it's all quite logical. That's right, it is. Logical and true. I'm glad you've all seen the light. Just as at last. This is unbelievable. After I made so much progress in proving his guilt, is he going to get away with it now? None of this is logical. Yeah, it makes no sense. Oh, she did the face lappy. Think of Kazuma-sama and Naruhoro-san. They never stopped looking for a way forward until the judge's final gavel. Pretty well then, Council. Proceed with what I assume to be your final cross exam. Okay, this is the final cross examination. Let's go. Get psyched up. Pump it up. Yes, Your Excellency. Pump, pump, pump it up. I stabbed the English woman. It's that very fact that proves I'm innocent. Because why would I have bothered to stab the woman if I've already poisoned her? Can't I use this? <clears throat> It really bothers me that I can't use this yet. And all this is gonna say is, eh, it's in German! Elizabeth and her German garden. We open this. Yeah, 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 take it off. Yeah, we can't examine that. This we clearly see is our, like, we engraved here. Miss Brett was clinging to the pen and dying message sends clearly the message too. It did for a killer, you mean? I don't think they're gonna be a key piece of this evidence game. Yeah, whatever. And we already discovered that's the newspaper. If only I could do something with the freaking tip. Mmm. If I poisoned her when I hurt the student and that pompous English murderer arguing it got my goats. Of course we're going to punish her. Okay, I'm just gonna have to press every statement. Uh, annoying. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, shut up. So, you do admit that you had murderous intentions toward Miss Brett then? Ha! Huh. The woman's very existence offended my sense of justice. Your sense of... Claiming some sort of righteous indignation. She was pure evil, a cold blooded killer who committed murder right here on our Empire soil. Did our good for nothing government do anything? Not a chance. So I had to step in. Fly the flag of justice, put things right for the people. Yes, so it was my civic duty, that's what drove me to do it. So, in summary, murderous intentions then. Whatever you want to call it, the point is this. That Englishwoman was a blight! So I had to do what was right for society. Yet a real wrong was done by the student girl in the dock. A crime for which she must pay. Obviously, because the po poisoning was nothing to do with me at all. Do you still maintain that you didn't give the poison to the victim? Obviously, that'd be like putting a belt on your trousers when you were already wearing braces like these. The accused administered the poison, following which this witness stabbed the victim. An unforgivable act, certainly, but not one of murder. That crime rests on the accused's shoulders. That is how the law works, you see, yokel. Who knows, you may even learn something here today. Two consecutive attempts on her life in the space of minutes. Quite a day for the victim. Do something that evil and you've got it coming. That's how the law works. The law of reckoning. That's not the kind of law this court upholds. 
You will reiterate why you were compelled to stab the victim then, witness. What exactly were they arguing about? About what happened in that restaurant nine months ago, that's what. A student girl was laying into the English woman for killing our beloved mentor, Dr. Wilson. Yes, John H. Wilson. A professor of medicine. Invited here from England by Professor Mikotova, no less. Right. But the English woman just jeered. The case was to be heard by the British Consular Court in Shanghai, however... There's little doubt that she would simply have been acquitted and sent back to her homeland a free woman. I was eating that student girl up inside, you could see it. I really felt for her. Oh? Huh? Hey? I... I can't... I can't stand here and listen to this tripe! Hey! Young girl, you stand accused here. You can't just blurt out whatever you feel like it. But there were, if there was no poison, just the stabbing, this case would be closed. Yeah, but sadly, they have to involve the poison, so we gotta... We gotta do it the game's way. No, you can't! Sorry, but I'm in the middle of some very important testimony here. Just keep quiet and listen. But this awful man is making all of this up! Susato, please, you have to make them listen. Shut up, I'm not Susato right now! Oh my gosh! Return to the dock at once, Memami-san. We are in the middle of a cross-examination. Your Excellency, please, I implore you. That journalist is clearly not a trustworthy witness. Exactly! He's a filthy, rotten, black-hearted, bigoted, dirty, great peeping Tom! Well, take it easy there. Please, I really think the court should hear what the defendant has to say. But it's his cross-examination, so can they? Your Excellency, I see no need whatsoever to entertain the accused's remarks. I will grant the request of the defense. But, but, Your Excellency... This is likely to be the final cross-examination of these proceedings. As such, I believe it would be ill-advised to stifle... stifle the defendant's obvious concerns. So, whilst recognizing that this contravenes regular protocol, I hereby call upon the defendant to speak. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me, I have to clear my throat. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Today is cute, but not that smart. It's nothing to do with Dr. Wilson, we were discussing the stolen poison. <laughs> stolen poison that killed the victim, you mean? I suspected her of being the one to steal it. I mean, just think about how she killed Dr. Wilson. That's true. Additionally, Miss Brett certainly had knowledge of the new poison. But surely it would be no easy task to steal a highly secret toxin being developed for the government. Indeed, all visitors to the laboratory are thoroughly searched when they leave. Even if a thief managed to avoid being seen by myself or a colleague, getting the poison out would be very difficult. That's true! I pestered Professor Mikotoba until he agreed to show me the poison when I visited his laboratory. But as I left, I was searched from top to tail. Miss Brett rather bluntly revealed the existence of the toxin we've been devel blah, developing, you see. And since Sosaki-san expressed such an interest in it, I felt unable to refuse. Obviously, I gave nothing away other than the fact that it was an extremely potent substance. Very ashamed of myself. It's just that, I had a singularly terrible experience with the deadly poison. I wanted to look at my old enemy in the eye. Surely you can understand that. Who did he poison? Because his landlord was the fire. To find out if my suspicions were true, I confronted Miss Brett about the poison. I told her that if there were to be an incident involving it somehow, it wouldn't just be the university. The military would be dragged into it. The whole government, even. It would be a complete disaster. And how did Miss Brett respond to your concerns? She just curled those beautiful lips of hers and said she didn't know the first thing about it. In English, actually. Ah, yes. Many memos on. One small question, if you don't mind. 
I do mind. Can't you see I'm busy? Clearly, we were outside the beach hut listening in whilst the defendant and Miss Brett were conversing. Presumably, then, it was you who wrote this article about what you heard. Exclusive. Deadly poison stolen from the Yume Medical Research Laboratory. The story was published in this morning's edition of Shoyu News. The details are too accurate for it to have been written by anyone else. Hmm. Sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, look at this. The entire article is almost what I said to Miss Brett. Word for word. Yeah. Well, many memo -san? But what does... This still doesn't prove that he did anything with poisons, though. It's kind of useless. As a journal and as a citizen of a free country. I don't have to reveal my sources. That's a founding principle of many memoism. Father's well, clearly right about this. That reporter did write that article, and he based it on what he overheard from outside the hut. Poison article. But what does that have to do with anything? That's what it was all about. You were trying to cover up the fact that you were listening in. Examine what got updated. Let the debate. Wait. Poison article. Following lecture, stolen, even the smallest amount entering the body, clear chemical, university had to be consulted. Since experiment, starting with the pair of breathing, ending with acute contraction of the pupils prior to death, such symptoms would be suggested that this toxin is apparently an entirely new synthesis of alkaloids, rumored to have been commissioned by the military. Wait. Did I read this more close? Even the smallest amount entering the body, either via the mouth or via a wound from a poison laced blade, proof in the minutes, caravans can develop chemical, your vision consultant. If there are no poison. Wait, whoops. I think I know how. I really think it was the, the pen. How do I prove that? That's why you came up with that stinking story about me arguing with her. Sh shut up! My stories never stink! Your face does, though. Ooh. Look, whatever you say, little girl, then I'll alter the facts. Your Excellency, there's something I want to say and I want it to go on record. Very well, you may amend your formal testimony. <sighs> Gross mouth breeder. Point is, if you poison someone, there's no reason to go stab the person as well. What did you add? I guess it was just this last one? Wait. No, seriously. What did you add? Why would I have bothered to stab the woman? Okay. What is just the last one? Perhaps you doubted the e efficacy of the poison and sought to make sure your victim would die. That's horse dung. What? That would be like pouring pepper on your Chinese ramen before you'd even taste it. Whoa! Oh, everything taken! Thank you so much for the follow! Also, happy Tuesday. Hope you're doing well. Uh, completely reckless! Although it might surprise you to learn that I am a bit of an impetuous pepper pourer as it happened. Once the victim had taken the poison, she would have been only minutes away from death. Yet, this man then proceeded to stab her in the back as well. It has to have been a good reason for that. Because he didn't want to be labeled as the killer, so he needed someone else to be the scapegoat, and the day it was there. It was the reporter who gave the poison to Miss Brett, then clearly. He must have done it prior to Ray entering the hut. Welcome, I'm good, thanks. I can't stay to watch this one. I don't want to spoil this game for me, but I want to come back another day for the voices. Oh yes, definitely play this game. Especially if you're a fan- um, Even if you're not a fan of the Phoenix Wright games, like... Good stuff. Like mystery, murders, puzz puzzles. It's fun. Yo, yeah, definitely play it, play it, play it! Everyone should play. Ooh. Yes, that's undeniable. 
But between him leaving the hut and the victim being stabbed, there was one very crucial change in the situation. Sorry? What change? Saying the same thing over and over again? Oh yeah, I mean, but every single Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney game suffers from that, like, repetitive dialogue. Just being like, hey, remember, tell us what you thought of this thing. Okay, I'll tell you what I thought of this thing. Wait, so this is what you thought of this thing? Yeah, this is what I thought. Japanese script writing. Uh, the reporter overheard the conversation between Rei and the Englishwoman. Ah, yes, that's it. That's when many Memosan first found out the exact nature of the poison he'd used. That could be the key here. If the victim had unwittingly taken the poison already, the reporter would have had no reason to stab her. On the face of it, that logic sounds entirely unreasonable. Entirely reasonable. But there's no question that this man was responsible for Miss Brett's murder. If we could think of a plausible explanation as to why he might have stabbed her even after the poisoning, I feel sure that everything would drop into place. That's what we should be looking for. Yes, I agree, and in order to do that, I must try to glean more information. I pressed everything. Okay, stab the woman. So, between the poisoning and the stabbing, he heard the conversation about the poison's effects. Oh, maybe... Maybe he ended up stabbing her because he was like, no one can find out that the poison was used because the military would be involved and he didn't want to be caught up with the military? He claims to have a sense of justice, but he's framing it as a girl. As long as it's his kind of justice, it's totally a-okay to do whatever you want. Um, so why would I have bothered to stab the woman if I've already poisoned her? And I'm gonna do the article and be like, THE MILITARY! Yes, the music stopped. Well, I can think of one reason. What? What? But before I explain, I'd like you to confirm something for the courts. Did you glean all the information for this newspaper article from what you overheard outside the hut? Of course he did! There can be no question of that! After all, when we were all in the laboratory together... All we were told was that it was a terrible toxin! And there's one more important fact to consider. According to the witness, Membami-san's verbal attack against the victim began as soon as she entered the hut. In other words, it would have been impossible for her to have slipped a poison into Miss Brett's drink. Where are you going with this, Council? Many memo -san has made it quite clear that he observed every single thing that happened in the beach hut. If the defendant had somehow found an opportunity, this man would have seen it. Ah. Which means that Miss Brett couldn't have imbibed the poison while the defendant was present. In fact, it must have been administered to her before memami -san entered the hut. Yes, very articulately put. When I walked into the hut, I immediately started to press Miss Brett about the poison. At which point, many Memosan overheard some worrying information. Worrying information? What worrying information? The information which he subsequently included in his newspaper article, namely... That the poison was being developed in strict secrecy and that it couldn't be readily obtained. Absolutely. In fact, that's quite an understatement. The only possible place it could come from is my lab. And furthermore, anyone afflicted by the poison would ex exhibit telltale signs of death. Extreme constriction of the pupils. Yes, it's quite stark when you see it. There are other poisons that show similar symptoms, but not among new substances that are undetectable. In other words, it would be clear that the victim's life had been ended by the use of this particular poison. Which would reduce the number of suspects to only a handful of people. Oh. I was thinking military involvement, but okay. Everyone in my laboratory is aware of the unique properties of the toxin we've been developing. 
None of them would be foolish enough to attempt to use it for some nefarious deed. Memba Misan being no exception. Therefore, we can conclude that whoever administered this unique poison to the victim was a layperson, unaware of its telltale properties. Uh -huh. In other words, someone like you, right then, Mini Memo? Yeah! It was you who stole the poison from the laboratory that day. And it was you who administered it to the unw unwitting victim. But you quickly realized that it was a terrible mistake. Because the poison caused such un unusual symptoms and was so traceable. As you listened in from, far, uh, from the far side of the beach hut's thin walls, you learned of these facts. But you'd already given the victim the poison at that point. It was too late. So you hatched a plan to disguise your mistake. A plan that involves stabbing the victim in the back through the reed screen. Here we go! But, but what could, could that possibly do? Isn't it obvious, Council? The plan was to kill Miss Brett before the poison could take effect. Once in the blood, the poison causes the onset of pu pupil constriction. But he had hoped to precipitate the victim's death before that happened, hadn't he? Exactly. Because without any revealing signs of the new secret poison's use, no one would have ever suspected. This is... extraordinary. Yes, the effects of the poison meant it would be too easily identified, so the killer had to mask its use. Which he attempted to do by plunging a knife into the middle of the vi victim's back. But how did I poison her? Everyone search does! You got it in your pen! Order, order, order. The argument presented is sound. The court is satisfied that it warrants consideration. Does the prosecution have a counter-argument it wish it to put forward? Well, um, there are a number of... I mean, yes, I count it completely. The prosecution's evasive response clearly shows that in much the same way as he nurtures the rem remnants of his top knot, he is clinging to lost hope. Oh, L Lost hope? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did I take out the poison? We were searched from top to bottom. Nobody found it on me. Get it over with. Ah, you pathetic, useless fallen samurai. Fallen? Who are you calling fallen? My burgeoning growth is on the run. I don't need a counter argument. What are you talking about? It should be blatantly obvious. I stole the poison, you say? Gave it to the victim, you say? Stabbed her, you say? Lots of fine theories. But I don't need a counter-argument because you don't have an argument yourself. Where's your evidence? Yes, you make it all sound so plausible, don't you? But without evidence, it means nothing. Whereas I, I base my news on facts. Facts? What do you mean? Explain yourself. I mean, what the professor said earlier in this trial. It's all here, my many memos, every word, every slip of the tongue, all noted. That's what Shoyu News is famous for, its power of the printed word. But surely it would be no easy task to steal a highly secret toxin being developed for the government. Indeed, all visitors to the laboratory are thoroughly searched when they leave. Even if a thief managed to avoid being seen by a silver colleague, getting the poison out would be very difficult. How's that then? Blown the story wide open. See, I, right and many more, a mere reporter from the show you news. Couldn't possibly have stolen that poison from the professor's laboratory. But you did! Sucker, you did! There can't be any question of it. He must have stolen the poison that day. He stole it and used it to kill. And if that's the case... As you've identified, the poison itself is the definitive evidence we need. 
Because whoever stole it from the laboratory that day is the true culprit here. What's your point, you annoyingly handsome country bumpkin? Oh, she's handsome. My point is this. There is one way that you, Mini Memosan, could have stolen the poison that day. Mm. I've heard enough verbal conjecture now, thank you. What the court must be shown is evidence. What proof do you have that this witness stole the poison on that day in question? <laughs> Approve, Your Excellency. Here's this fountain pen. Ah. Fountain pen? How can that possibly be relevant? These magical pens somehow seem to have enough ink to write many thousands of kanji characters. I believe they arrived in our country for the first time some 15 years ago now. Ah, I swear by a weasel hair calligraphy brush and nothing else, these newfangled pens are merely a fad. Well, as a forward-thinking man of words, obviously I love my fountain pen. Suck up a, a what? A soup song? Of sumptuous ink, and one's work is awash with words in the blink of an eye. That's right. Fountain pens have a small reservoir in the barrel, into which ink is sucked up through the nib of the pen in order to write with later. What does all this have to do with talking? Wait, what does all this talking of the sucking up ink have? Ah! And just as it's possible to suck ink up into the reservoir, it's also possible to eject it through the nib again, of course. He really is a bad reporter. He can tell the defense is a woman. Yeah, I mean, no one can tell that she's a woman, so they're all bad. My word, can, can this really be? It be true. Well, many mammals on? Ah, um... When you saw the deadly poison before your eyes in the laboratory that day, you used your fountain pen, your very lifeblood, to steal some of it, didn't you? By siphoning the poison up through the nib and into the pen's reservoir. Yeah! You can't prove it! What absurdity! That never happened! The nib! We can test it right now, guys! True, we've heard that there are very procedures in place to prevent thefts like this from the laboratory. But would anyone have thought to look inside the fence pen? Of all places? No, I'm a little ashamed to say. That for fear of offending our guests, such a detailed search would not have been conducted. Well, this is quite startling, I must say. I remind the court that this pen was found in the clutches of the victim when she died. In other words... It was dropped at the seam by many Memosan. I want to see your freak out face, man. So the crucial question is, when exactly was the pen dropped? Are are you suggesting? I should check. Make me dab. The natural conclusion is that in your haste to act whilst the victim was distracted for a moment, you dropped the pen after you emptied the poison from it into a glass. Number of alternative explanations. For for example, the witness could have been using his pen to write down details of his conversation with the victim. And when shocked by one of her outrageous answers, the pen fell, fell from his quivering hand. No, that can't be. If it was, how to explain why the pen was devoid of ink? What? As you can see for yourself if you examine the evidence, there would appear to be no ink present in the reservoir. What newspaper reporter goes to the interview someone with nothing in his pen? No, the pen was dropped after the poison that filled its reservoir had been emptied into the victim's glass. Witness, what do you have to say in your defense? Wahaha! So this is how our modern justice system works, is it? So what if the ink in my pen runs dry? So what if my pencil snaps? I can always claw my way back into the game. I have plenty in reserve. Uh... You claim I sucked the poison in my pen? That's a wild speculation, nothing more. 
If you thought you could bring down a fine, upstanding citizen with a trick like that, think again! Hmm. Looks as though it's going to take one final decisive blow to finish this matter. As I see it, the situation is now very simple. It rests upon whether or not this witness did indeed steal the poison on the day in question. And therefore, it all depends on whether or not the defense can prove that he did it with evidence. One decisive blow. Regal. Ah, no such evidence could possibly exist. Any memo san. This is how our modern justice system works. What? In the courtroom, evidence is everything. Something you would do well to remember. Because we are well past the point of speculation at this stage, I assure you. Very well then. I call upon the defense to present the aforementioned evidence. This is it then. This will be the final piece in the puzzle! The defense can prove by means of this item that it was the witness's pen that was used to steal the poison. Goodbye, sucker! Counsel, what is that bottle? This bottle contains a unique chemical reagent that can identify the poison in question. Yes, that poison is an entirely new synthesis of alkaloids developed by my colleagues and I. That was like the fourth time you set this to trial. It would be impossible to detect traces of it by any other method. Or, from another perspective... Simply with this chemical reagent, anybody at all could check for traces of the poison. Uh, a reagent? What? One drop of the contents of this bottle on the tip of your fountain pen, many memos on, is all it will take to solve this case beyond all reasonable doubt. Uh, uh, no, you can't! I won't! Your crimes are bad enough, but at least no one to admit defeat. Your Excellency, the defense requests permission to carry out the test on the fountain pen at once. <laughs> this isn't my fault! The Empire drove me to this, trying to hold its head high as a stabilization, but bowing its head to the foreign bird. I took a barns and forward with my youth pen. I fought outside the the battle we all did, and anyone just all the way in the middle of the middle of the middle of the with me! I'm there! <laughs> Did I do it right? That was a Susato takedown, wasn't it? Please, I am Naruhodo here right now, please. Not quite. That was a Ryu Tower takedown. I I was hoping his um freak out face would be a lot more ugly. He deserved it. The instant the first drop of the reagent touched the nib of the fountain pen, it was clear to everyone present. When I saw it there in the lab, the poison just the devil got hold of me, and I decided to do it on a whim. I excused myself and emptied all the ink down the sink in the bathroom, washing the reservoir out carefully. Then you waited for an opportunity to suck up some of the poison, didn't you? Into your fountain pen. Yes, that's right. Answer me one thing, Mini Mimosan. Why did you steal it? For what purpose? To kill her! Yeah, dummy! Ah! Isn't it obvious? To find out what it was made of and expose it in an article. Oh, never mind. I mean, it was a secret project after all. Too juicy for a journal like me to pass up. Then, then why did the Englishwoman end up dead? I went into that hut intending to quiz her on her situation, that's all, as a reporter. A known killer, enjoying full freedom, evading justice by leaving the country. I told her what I thought about it. And she... 
She le just laughed in my face. Oh, what's this? A Far Eastern caveman purporting to practice journalism. Really, you must learn the difference between reporting and listening at doorways, you ignorant plebeian. What? What did you call me? It's a country with its pretensions to a justice system. The free press, it's really very depressing. You see our superior ways in the West, yet you lack in the mental cap capacity to emulate them. Get out of here, you oaf. Get out and crawl back into the cave you came from. That's when I remembered. About the deadly poison I happened to have in my pen at the time. What a terrible tale. In my head, I knew I should just get out of there as quickly as possible, but I couldn't. I couldn't let her get away with what she'd done, when she clearly had no remorse at all. I suppose it was my journal spirit. Getting all fired up. I don't feel sorry for you. Yes, it sucks that Giselle was just walking around free in Japan, but who knows what would have happened when she got to Shanghai. I'd like to ask you something. Also, like framing it, aren't they, you douchebag? Yes. You often talk about justice. But surely as a journalist, you could have used other means to deliver the justice you sought. There's no justice in the press. Sorry? After that trial nine months ago, I kept digging and digging to find out what happened in that courtroom. And finally, I discovered the truth. It was a cover-up, that's what it was! Cover-up? What do you mean? I would remind you of your position, witness. Be careful of what you say. Oh, come on. Doesn't it strike you as strange? We're suddenly not allowed to convict a foreign national? Con consular jurisdiction should never have come into it. And yet that puffed-up English woman was going to sail away into the sunset a free woman. The only possible explanation is that behind the scenes, some deal had gone down between Britain and Japan. What sort of deal? I'd done my research, dug up all the dirt, it was all ready to be published. But you know what happened? The editor just tore the article up. Came under pressure from the government, you mean? Our government is going to let criminals walk free. They're going to crush the free press. Then what choice do I have but to see that justice is done myself? Let's not forget, many memo -san. And you committed murder for yourself, and you tried to lay the blame at a defendant's door. I'm sorry, but you're no better than Giselle Brett. What? Truth is, you have no right to talk about justice at all. I... I suppose... Yeah, like you tried to frame an innocent girl, you... Douche nozzle? It would appear that we have reached a conclusion in this trial at last. Counsel for the defense, Yu Taro Naruhodo. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> Sorry, Your Excellency. Just musing in a manly way here. It's almost unbelievable that this is your first experience of the Supreme Court. It was an excellent performance. In truth, it very much reminded me of your cousin's exploits. <laughs> Oh, Naruhorosuke, you mean? The way he handled the trial nine months ago, and the way you handled this one. It gives me hope that we are genuinely entering a new era of justice in this land. That's very flattering, Your Excellency. Hearing the defense you put forward today made me feel most keenly. That the future of our justice system will be forged by you and your contemporaries. Thank you. So, Prosecutor Aoshi, do you have any final thoughts? Prosecutor Aoshi? I, Takatsuchi of the Aoshi clan, 
been bested by a callow youth not once now, but twice. If there was any shred of my former self left, it has withered and died here today. Gosh, your journey to cultural enlightenment sure took a while, didn't it? Silence! Rather than living on shame. Living on in shame. I will end it all now with this blade. For that is a true path to ouchyism! Ouchyism? One hopes that's the only way in which he'll be modeling himself after witness. <laughs> Break of my top knot. It is the time is right for farewell. Hope is lost forever. Hakizuchi. Break of my top knot. The time is right for farewell. Hope is lost. You can't even make a haiku. You suck. Don't get your scalp! Don't get your scalp! At least he didn't get his scalp. <laughs> Even Hosonaga? A humorous end to the trial. Yeah, really. Now, in regard to the defendant, Rei Memami-san. Yes, Your Excellency? I have reached my final verdict. I hereby find you. Did he just shave his ball of a head? Yes, he did, Monkips. Ah, the tiny little growth of his hair. Also, how you been? I hope you've been well, dude. Thanks for joining. Happy Tuesday. I have defeated Ouchie once again. Court is adjourned. Wee -woo, wee -woo. And now a bit more conversation and then we'll be done with this case. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's over. My heart is still pounding in my chest though. It's all I can do to just stay standing. Lawyers have such great responsibility. Such a great burden to bear. Good job. Wee! Don't they, Naruhoro-san? Susato! Susato! Thank you! Thank you so much! You were... so dashing in there! Hey! And father! Honestly, I'm so touched by everything you've... Oh no! I think I'm going to cry! It wasn't easy, but together, we made it. I was on the verge of tears at the end, too. The only reason I'm still here is because of you! Oh no, I can't take all the credit. It took courage to tell the truth in there. You did wonderfully, today. I would have to say that the congratulations belong to you. Susato, don't be so standoffish! Sorry? We're friends, equals, and the trial's over, so no more of this formal super humility nonsense. It's time to celebrate with swagger, to throw caution to the wind. Caution to the... what? <laughs> I'm the greatest defense lawyer, Ryutaro Naruhoro, and I'm taking you to a milk bar tomorrow. Milk bar? Or something. Right, see, I'll, um, think about it, eh? Okay? At any rate, we really knocked the wind out of that horrid man, and it felt so good! Yes, it was satisfying. It really was. Isn't there anybody else we could throw together? I hope you're not looking at me, Uday. Oh! My goodness! No, of course not! Of course not! Ah, there it is at last, Uday's lovely smile. You fought for your friend to the very last. As your father, I'm extremely proud of you. Defense attorney Du Taro Naruhodo. Thank you, but I couldn't have done it without your help. 
Anyway, it's time to bid farewell to Rudu Tower, I think. I shall miss him in a way, but it's back to Susato Mikotoba now. So, I'll never see him again then. What a terrible shame. What is happening? Ah, Soseki-san and Inspector Hosnaga. I do hope you've been keeping well. Is... is that... really you? Yes, I had to change my appearance for... well, obvious reasons, I hope. But it's me. Susato Mikotoba. I... I... don't... So dashing, so divine! No! <laughs> Doubly dashing, yes, and, and devilishly divine! Just look at you! I have no idea, Mr. Sato-san Esquirist, that you are locum student Naruhoto-san Esquire's cousin! <laughs> We're not! We're not cousins! Astonishingly astounding ace attorney! Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Poor Sosaki-san, so confused! <laughs> I still remember the first time I ever met him. He was in a prison cell in London. What an extraordinary conundrum it was that the unwitting student from Japan found himself embroiled in. But after Naruhoto-san's skillful defense at the Old Bailey, Sosaki-san was free to return to Japan. That font color to that background is terrible. Now he seems to have earned himself great fame as an author. I'm stunned. That's a truly impressive disguise. Even I, even I had no idea, and I'm a chief inspector of the police bureau. Who came up with this turtle, no less? I'm not sure you should be admitting to that, inspector. Amazing. You're a woman of many faces, I see. Just two, really. And this was a once-in-a-lifetime event, I hope. Oh, I'm not a patch on you, though, inspector. Well, I am a professional, of course. He's bleeding! I do worry about Inspector Hosonaga sometimes, I really do. Nine months ago, when he appeared here at the Supreme Court to testify. He was an undercover disguised- He was an undercover- Wait, he was undercover! I can freaking read. Disguised as a head waiter of a restaurant. Stupid font color is terrible. And then on the steamship to Great Britain, of course, disguised as a sailor to keep us safe on, a dirt, on the journey. <gasps> Cosmo! That didn't help you, did it? Asuma-sama. Asogi! From my perspective, I have to admit that I have mixed feelings about all this. I mean, now the truth has been lost forever. What do you mean? I'm talking about the murder that the English woman committed at the end of last year. Ah, yes. It was an English doctor she killed, as I understand it. How many times do we have to say it was freaking John Wilson that she killed? Dr. John H. Wilson, just a minute for you to How many times? I'm gonna say this. The mystery is, why did she kill him? And now that the culprit herself is dead, I'll probably never know the answer. On the voyage to Great Britain, we had a most unexpected encounter. With Mr. Herlock Sholmes, the great detective, I mean. Yes, I remember Mr. Sholmes well, of course. Ah, my arch nemesis, how lightly you utter his name. Well, according to the stories published about him in The Adventures of Herlock Sholmes, the detective once had a partner who helped him solve crimes, a best friend. And that man was an exceptional doctor of medicine by the name of John H. Wilson. What? Do Dr. Wilson? I just can't believe that it's a coincidence. I think that the English doctor of medicine killed here in Japan nine months ago. Oh, whoops, this is Suzato talking. Must have been a friend and partner of Mr. Sholmes. And if that's really true... Then the poor girl won't ever see her beloved father again. As you know... 
I traveled to Great Britain once myself to study. It was around the time you were born. Yes, Grandmother told me about it. On returning to Japan, I took upon my professorship at the Imperial Yume University. But I also served another role as an advisor to the government on diplomatic affairs. Yes, I was aware of that as well. In that case, I'm sure you understand that there are some confidential matters I cannot divulge to you. Could you tell me one more- just one thing? Why did you summon me back to Japan? You don't seem sick. It's been two months now since I returned. When I left England, it was because an urgent telegram had arrived from Japan. It said that you'd collapsed with high fever, and you were growing weaker by the day. What? Where did that news come from? That's what I'd like to know, because after that long sea voyage, I found you in fine health, father. Was there something in Great Britain that you perceived might inconvenience me in some way, or harm me? That's really the only explanation I can think of. Dear me, do you reserve your most cutting, cutting glares for your father, Susato? I'm sorry, my dear. I simply can't... Ooh, let me go... Ah, ha, ah, ah. ha... Many Memo-san! So, one throw wasn't enough for you. I've got one last thing to say before they take me away, Professor! Me? I know the truth. I know you had a hand in what went on. In that visiting student's fate. Visiting student? Zale Brett, you mean? No, not her! The student of law who left for Great Britain eight months ago! What? Student of law? You must mean... Kazuma-sama. What are you talking about? What does any of this have to do with Kazuma-sama? Nobody here in Japan knows anything about it. They don't know what that guy never made it to England, that he died on that steamship. And that he'll never... Uh... <laughs> well, I didn't expect to find him in here. What were you officers playing at? Terribly sorry, Your Excellency. I was coming to tell you that the rickshaw had arrived, Eugene. And it's a good job I came by. Yes, thank you for dealing with him. And I'll be there shortly. Oh, um, Your Excellency. Ha, 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 ha. The trial's over. I'm not Your Excellency anymore. Merely your father's friend, Seishiro Ijikoku. His name is Hell? <laughs> and may I say that since I saw you last, you seem to have taken on a more dashing appearance. <laughs> Susato? <laughs> Did you know all along from the start of the trial? Ah, 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 ah. A judge sees everything, Susato. I couldn't let you take the risk. If Seishiro here hadn't known and then he'd recognized you. So I had a word in his ear beforehand, as an old friend. So, Seishiro, shall we? Yes, having ruled on that case, we now have various diplomatic issues to address. Before you go, father. Sorry, my dear. We shall have to return to our earlier conversation at a later date. But well done again, both of you. You did admirably. Oh, thank you very much. What did you think my of my Seishiro sling, eh? It's been a while since I sent a man flying like that. Ha 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 ha. Ooh, her dad is avoiding a certain topic. What is he hiding? What could father be hiding from me? <laughs> what is he hiding? About Giselle Brett. About Dr. Wilson. And now, it seems, according to the reporter, about Kazuma-sama. Going to have to bring this up with Father sometime. When nobody else is around. Um, Judicial Assistant Mikotoba Esquiress, could I have a word? Oh, yes, of course, Osaki-san. What is it? I think, perhaps, it could be fate that we're meeting again like this now. You see, there's something I need to tell you. Oh? I believe that it may be related to the reason why your father summoned you back from England. This I have to hear. 
Please, Sosaki-san, tell me at once. Oops, there's a Suzato. Sosaki-san, tell me at once. I will! I will, I will, I will! As you know, my time in England was terrible. Cursed, I have no doubt. Such awful things I was embroiled in. Thank goodness locum student Naruhoto-san Esquire stepped in. After he secured my freedom, I couldn't wait to get on a ship back here in my homeland. To my homeland. Having arrived in Japan, I submitted a report about my experiences to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The next thing I knew, I had a visitor. It was your father, Professor Mikotoba. He wanted to ask me all sorts of things about my report. Father? He seemed to be especially taken with a particular part of the report. Anyway, he left eventually, having thoroughly quizzed me. But it was the very next day that he sent the telegram to you, asking you to return to Japan. What was it then? The particular part my father wasn't interested in. That Kazuma is dead? I don't know exactly. What do you remember them? The two terrible cases I was c caught up in. Of course! I can never forget. I don't remember the other one. Your father seemed to concern himself mainly with the second case. Second one? You mean... The one Mr. Sholmes forbade any of us to talk about in public? I don't remember that case! The first one was... The first one was... Do you know, Scare? The second one was... <gasps> McGill... McGill did. The third one was... The... The book... The four... I don't remember the poison one! Which is why the only case involving you that any member of the public is aware of is the first. Well, I don't care! I don't have to listen to what that dastardly detective says! Anyway, the point is... Seems that case somehow holds the key to all these curious, unanswered questions. That horrific, hideous, heinous case. The case of the haunted lodgings. That case somehow caused my father to summon me urgently to come back to Japan? I thought the whole business was over, but it seems I was wrong. Perhaps that was only the start. Perhaps the story is not yet told. So, am I going to be going back to London without... without?大臣父は何も語りませんが、あの事件にはどうやら大きな謎を解く重要な鍵が眠っているようでございます。あの事件の記録はお部屋の棚の左隅に残しておきました。よろしければ振り返ってみてはいかがでしょう。She better be coming back to London to be my assistant eventually.今日も抜けるような青空でございます。She wants to see me. Wow, in English they say you're Susato, but in Japanese she just legit just says her name. Those two are Phoenix Wright's ancestor! And. Oh no, I didn't get a special achievement for this case. What did I miss? Uh, oh no, I got it. Susato, Sus no. There had to be a secret... Oh. Oh well, I'll figure it out later. Oh man. Memoirs of the Clouded Kokoro. Investigation, part one. Okay. Well, that's the end of this case, at least. So next time I stream, it will be the start of the second case. Uh, my throat is super sore, so I need to go. Um, oh, shoot. Um, this Thursday is Thanksgiving, and I'm going to see family, so I won't be streaming on Thursday and Friday. I don't know if I'll stream on Friday or not. Uh, it depends on if I have plans or not. Um, but if I don't manage to stream this weekend, it's just going to be next week, Tuesday again. Yeah. 
But yeah, we'll pick this up then. Go watch Ocarina of Time, the part where Link is in the garden. I will. I'm going to watch their compilation. Because I want to see the soup slurping part again. But yeah, that's it for me tonight. Thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Stay toasty. Have a good night, everyone. And maybe see you this weekend. If I don't, happy Thanksgiving, American people. Good night. Bye-bye.